when we say photography, we usually mean instant photography, instant sharing, instant feedback from the viewers as we see in today's social media. But things were not that instant as it seems today. Even instant photography was a concept that was previously thought impossible before the arrival of Polaroid cameras. Undoubtedly, Polaroid cameras started a new era in photography and became one of the most successful camera companies in the world. Big players like Kodak also failed to surpass what Polaroid was doing. But once, a billion dollar company ultimately ended up being bankrupt. But what caused Polaroid to go bankrupt? Does Polaroid still exist in the market? All these are going to be discussed in this video, so watch the video till the end to know the rise and fall of Polaroid. Let's look at how photography used to be before instant photography arrived. Back then, photography was a complex process. Soon after taking the image, it required some chemical processes to be done in the dark lab. And it took days to get the final image in hand. But Polaroid cameras changed it all. You could get the picture soon after taking it within minutes. The Polaroid company has an almost century-long history. In 1932, an American scientist named Edwin Land and his physics instructor George W. Wheelwright founded the Land Wheelwright Laboratories. At first, it was not an instant camera manufacturing company. Rather, it started its journey as an innovative tech company. It used to produce a range of gadgets including 3D movies, glare-reducing goggles for dogs, periscopes, infrared night viewing devices, and many more. Besides, the company gained enormous popularity for producing polarizing filters. These filters were used in sunglasses and photographic filters. With the success of their polarizing products, the company managed to get financial support from Wall Street investors in 1937, and the name of the company was changed to Polaroid. The year 1944 is marked as one of the most important years for instant photography. In that year, Land went on a family vacation where her daughter asked him why she had to wait for photo development and why she couldn't see the pictures instantly. The little girl's way of thinking influenced Land and he started to find ways to see the pictures just after capturing them. In the next three years, Land devoted himself to researching a consumer-grade instant camera. And finally, in 1948, the company launched the Land Camera Model 95 camera, the first instant camera in the world. But the company was a bit skeptical about the success of this camera and produced only around 60 of them at first. The camera went on sale on the day after Thanksgiving in 1948 and all the cameras were sold within a couple of hours after the camera launch. In the next couple years, Polaroid was the only player in the instant photography market. In the 1960s and the early 70s, Polaroid captured almost 20% of the film business and 15% of the camera business in the US market. If you're wondering how the camera could provide instant pictures, well, the chemical process replicated the process done in the film developing darkroom. However, the early models had some issues. Firstly, the image taking and developing process was a bit challenging. Users needed to remove the film paper manually with their hands. Then, after one minute, the film required to be peeled open by hand to let it dry. And there was a risk that some film chemicals would be left on your hands. So, to sort out those issues, Land came up with another revolutionary camera called the SX-70. This camera was released in 1972. It made all the process of film development hands-free. The film used to eject from the camera and develop into a picture automatically. The SX-70 was also a big hit in the market. Polaroid sold about 7 million units of SX-70 cameras by 1974. So Polaroid was doing great business capturing a considerable part of the camera market. It didn't go unnoticed by the big players in the camera market. Even Kodak tried to launch a camera with the same instant photography concept that Polaroid was using, though Kodak had been the film supplier for Polaroid cameras previously. Kodak's Kodomatic series was launched in 1976 and it was the one and only rival of Polaroid's SX-70. So Polaroid filed a lawsuit against Kodak for patent infringement. And in 1990, Kodak had to pay Polaroid about $909 million for the infringement case. Kodak was also forced to call out all its instant photography products from the market. The decline of Polaroid started in 1977 when Polaroid introduced a home movie camera called Polavision. But the video market was already captured by the videotape-based system at that time, so Polaroid couldn't gain much attention in the market. And in 1979, the manufacturing equipment of Polavision was sold which caused the company a loss of millions of dollars. 
This blunder had a profound impact on Polaroid. The loss coerced Land to resign from Polaroid. Moreover, Polaroid was also compelled to fire thousands of employees and close many manufacturing plants. Early 1990s saw the advent of the digital cameras and with that, the biggest fear of Polaroid was finally there in the market. Polaroid's biggest chunk of profits was coming from not the instant cameras, not the hardware or any other product, but only the instant films which were being sold at a gross margin of about 65%. And there was no alternative for Polaroid which was as profitable as the film business. The new management tried to diversify its business to decrease dependency on instant photography. Polaroid tried to enter the digital camera market in 1996 with its PDC-2000. However, it failed to secure a place in the market. It also tried to enter the print and scanning market with its PrintScan 4035mm scanner. But heavy competition from Nikon and Minolta products tossed Polaroid out of that market too. So Polaroid was left with no other option but to stick to its instant film business because it was the only thing that was generating revenue. But the amount was decreasing day by day because of the aggressive market takeover of digital cameras. With that little revenue, it became challenging for Polaroid to bear the operational cost. So at one point, Polaroid was compelled to sell its landmark, historic headquarters building and surrounding property. But nothing could save Polaroid from the ultimate fate. The company became bankrupt in 2001 and lastly in 2008, the company announced the end of its instant film production. Polaroid was not just a camera, it was a name of emotion to many. Though the company announced the discontinuation of films, still many were passionate about them. Florian Capps and Andre Boston were so passionate about the Polaroid films that they decided to produce films for Polaroid cameras. With that thought, they bought a Polaroid production factory along with all the machinery for about $3.1 million in Enschede, Netherlands in 2008. They named their business The Impossible Project. And you might be surprised to hear that they are running their business successfully with a good amount of net revenue per year. In 2017, the Impossible Project acquired the brand and intellectual property of Polaroid and renamed it as Polaroid Originals. In 2020, the company again renamed itself as just Polaroid. So that was all about the rise and fall of Polaroid. This is a perfect example of what can happen if a company, no matter how successful it is, fails to adapt to the changing environment. And it also shows us how emotion towards a brand can save it from sure demise. If the impossible project was not there, the name of Polaroid would be a name of history. So do you think Polaroid still can make a comeback in the mainstream camera market? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section.